Ladies and gentlemen, I am the American Spy Fox. Welcome to the channel. In today's video, I got a short one for you. I want to read a petition that I typed myself and that I am hoping to get 50,000 signatures for that I might travel to Seattle and turn this thing in to the people who need to see it in person. This is my goal, 50,000 signatures, and I will pay for my own trip to Seattle and talk to who needs to be talked to in person. I would like for you to not only listen to me read it, we can also discuss it in the comments, and I would like for you to read it and understand it yourself. This is very important. My petition is a little bit different than other petitions for the case of Kurt Cobain. Mainly other petitions I've read just want the case to be reopened. Well, the case has been reopened before. You can thank Soaked in Bleach for that. Seattle started peeing their pants when Soaked in Bleach was about to come out. They reopened the case for about 20 minutes and said, Yep, we did another official investigation, and uh, we're going to stand by our original verdict of suicide. I'm not asking for the case to be reopened. I am asking for Kurt Cobain's death certificate to be changed from suicide to undetermined. We're going to put pressure on the King County Coroner's office, and if we can get them to change it to undetermined, then that forces another investigation on the Seattle Police Department. In case you are not aware, Natalie Wood, 30 years after her accident where she fell off a boat and drowned, supposedly, according to the other two people on the yacht, I believe it was uh, Christopher Walken and uh, eh, you guys know the other guy, her death certificate was changed 30 years later. They have amended it to include that there were undetermined factors. How she ended up in the water is a mystery. And this was due to conflicting stories from the other two witnesses. How many conflicting stories have we heard about the last week of Kurt Cobain's life? Accidentally fell off a boat and drowned? which I heard was actually her biggest fear was drowning in water and then that ended up happening to her. Her death certificate was changed from accident to undetermined 30 years later. So it can happen. We can do this. We just need enough people behind it to make a change. Originally, as I put in my community post, I was going to have a buddy of mine who's a civil attorney type it up and pay him. But then a viewer of the channel told me about this awesome website called change.org where you yourself can type your own petition it's completely valid it's legal and um hey change.org even brought the mexican pizza back to taco bell which also if you didn't know just came back to taco bell today i'm not trying to make light of this situation i just really like the mexican pizza and whoever you were that started that petition that made a huge corporate franchise like taco bell bring food back to their menu thank you because i'm going to be enjoying a mexican pizza after i get done with this video and we can laugh at that and it sounds goofy but what if they had never started that petition you know what i'm saying changes can be made however small however big changes can be made i would like to redirect your attention to change.org where i will read to you my petition i ask you to share this with everyone i don't even have 50,000 subscribers and to get these people's attention i need 50,000 signatures share it with your friends share it with your family if there's a long lost friend from high school that you used to listen to nirvana with send the link to them on facebook hell use it as an excuse to get back in touch with your ex blame it on me share it with everyone everywhere ladies and gentlemen i would like to direct your attention to this website change.org where I would like to read my petition to you. The petition is thus far stated as follows. Leading experts in the field of American pathology who have reviewed the available evidence of Kurt Cobain's death have raised questions as to whether or not he would have been conscious enough to commit suicide. It is this petitioner's belief and of those who have signed below that sufficient evidence has been brought to light by world leading experts in the field of American pathology since the death of Kurt Cobain that his life could not have been reasonably taken by his own hands. It is this petitioner's belief and of those who have signed below that enough sufficient evidence has been made available to both the public and the private sectors of American pathology which suggests that the death certificate ruling of suicide declared by the King County Coroner's Office on the same day, April 8, 1994, only hours after his body was discovered, was made in haste, 
under outside influences other than the King County Coroner Office's employees under pressure and without sufficient time for a thorough official death investigation to be conducted. It is this petitioner's belief and of those that signed below that the only action in which could right this wrong would be to change the declaration of suicide upon Kurt Cobain's death certificate to that of undetermined. It is the belief of this petitioner and of those who have signed below that every individual whose life has been cut short, whether by their own hand or by another, has the basic human right for their families to receive a sufficient understanding of why their life has ended. The mere haste alone in which the King County Coroner's Office determined the death of Kurt Cobain's demise is proof enough that a thorough investigation could not have been conducted. The amount of time required for a thorough death investigation simply does not exist within this case. It is the opinion of this petitioner and of those who have signed below and numerous renowned homicide investigators that the King County Coroner's Office rushed to judgment in an attempt to satisfy both the media and the spouse of Kurt Cobain, Courtney Love. The King County Coroner's Office conducted themselves with gross negligence and disrespect to the truth. We ask that you please make this change so a proper death investigation might be conducted by outside experts other than the King County Coroner's Office. Thank you. And that's it. Short, simple, sweet, straight, however you want to say it right to the point. The fact of the matter is, and no one can deny this no matter what side of the fence you're on, whether you believe Kurt took his own life by his own hand or whether you believe some other people were involved, you cannot put suicide on a death certificate hours after you find a body and then say you did a thorough investigation. Every homicide detective I've ever seen interviewed about this subject says I would have waited at least two weeks before I can confidently say that I've done a proper investigation. At least two weeks before I said a word to the media. King County conducted themselves under gross negligence before they knew anything without a thought for what the truth might be. They just wanted to get out in front of the cameras and say something. Ms. Love was saying that he'd been suicidal for a few weeks, so they said, oh, well, he must have killed himself then. And that was that. And what kills me is even back then, she was known as the most notorious liar amongst celebrities. And they took her word for it. The lady who signed her mother-in-law's name falsifying a missing persons report knowing that Kurt wanted a divorce and they were separated. Had they just taken a moment to say, hmm, maybe we should process the evidence. Maybe we should look for fingerprints. Maybe we should take samples for future DNA analysis. Had they done all these things properly, instead of posing for pictures, yeah, that's right, you heard me right, they posed for pictures. Instead of concentrating on the scene and getting good photos for experts to analyze, they thought, hey, we're in a dead rock star's greenhouse. Let's pose for pictures so we can be famous and show our family. I'm going to stand over here and cross my arms and look like a really clever detective. The proof is in the pictures. You can see how unconcerned they are. They're taking pictures of each other instead of the scene. Also, just real quick, you can see here in this picture up in the right corner is Kurt's leg. I never really realized how far away his body was from the actual drug kit. For some reason in my head, I'd always imagine him as being right beside it because according to their theory, he would have had to have shot himself immediately after injecting the heroin into his arm because right, he would have went unconscious, right? Any addict will tell you that amount will render you unconscious very quickly and their theory was he put this stuff away and then immediately, you know, took his own life. Well, why did he scoot over several feet before he chose to do that? They've always defended the theory that there would have been enough time before he was rendered unconscious. Detective Mike Chazinski even said, well, yeah, had he just sat there, he would have died anyway. Like, he admitted it was an enormous dose of heroin, right? Keep in mind, he would have had to have put the caps back on the syringes, put everything neatly back into the box, roll his sleeves down, put his tourniquet away, and then suddenly decides to scoot over like five feet to do what they claim he did to himself. I don't know, just everything about it seems odd to me. 
had they only taken it seriously and not just taken the word of a lady who you have to admit under this context, you know, the falsifying of the police report and all the money involved and her career at stake and asking her attorney if there was any way to avoid the prenuptial agreement. I bet they didn't even know there was a prenuptial agreement and they were in the process of getting divorced. These are questions that they did not ask because there was no investigation. The handwriting, the practice sheets in her book bag, the fact that she was telling the media that her and Kurt had a suicide pact and he must have went through with it, but she didn't. The fact that Tom Grant recorded her saying she was going to falsify her own suicide. These are all red flags that a seasoned homicide detective has probably heard before. This isn't a fairy tale. This isn't a Hollywood movie. This kind of shit happens all of the time. Women do it to men, men do it to women. When it comes to money and success and career and respect and all that stuff, there are some people who want those things more than life itself. They didn't talk to anyone but the spouse. Grant even tried to hand them over everything he had and they just ignored him. Well, let's see if they'll ignore 50,000 people. You would think that one of those police officers, one of those detectives would have just taken a breath, taken a step back and said, maybe we shouldn't rest the judgment on this. Just, just to be safe, just to make sure we've done our job correctly, let's treat this like a real crime scene. And that never happened. So that's what the petition is about. If we can't make SPD budge, let's try to make the coroner's office budge. Maybe there's someone in there with a brain now. You never know who thinks, yeah, that case was botched. It does need re-examined. Never know till you try. Share this with everybody, guys. I'll be pushing this thing until June. If I hit that 50,000 mark, I'm off to the West Coast. Bye-bye. <laughs>